Hey guys, Michael 23 b here. So today we're talking about binary adders, but not just any old adders, no. What I want to make is a binary adder only using villagers and no redstone components. So if you're a nerd like me, you may be familiar with creators like Steve Mould or Matt Parker from Stand Up Maths. These guys have created some amazing adders using zero electricity. Steve created one using water and gravity, and Matt once created one using a whole bunch of falling dominoes. These are some great videos, so if you want to check them out, I'll link them in the description. But how are we going to create a binary adder in Minecraft? Well, obviously the easiest way to do it would be to use redstone, but for the purposes of this video, I'm not going to allow that at all. This means I can't use redstone dust or anything that's crafted with redstone dust. So no repeaters, pistons, or anything like that. If you've been watching Minecraft content for a while, you may know that these redstoneless adders have been similarly done by people like Jazzy Red and Gurg, using things like water, armor stands, and fence gates. These videos were a big inspiration for this project, but as I said, I want to attempt an adder with villagers. So how the heck are we going to do that? Well, before we start, let me just give you a basic rundown of how computers work. Because at a fundamental level, computers don't even know what a number or anything really is. All they know is whether there's power or no power on a wire, represented by a one for power and a zero for no power. And in order to build an adder, we need components called logic gates. So specifically, what we need are OR gates, which give an output if either of the inputs are on. We need AND gates, which give an output only if both of the inputs are on. And we need exclusive OR gates, which only turn on if one of the inputs is on, but not both. So then if we combine the logic gates like this, we have what's called a half adder. And if we combine two half adders, we have what's called a full adder, which can add three binary bits together. And then if we combine multiple full adders together, we can add any two binary numbers together to get our sum. So now that we know all that, let's get back into Minecraft and go over our options for moving the villagers around. One is that we could use job sites, such as lecterns, and then once we open this trapdoor, they should pathfind to the nearest job site. We could also use beds at nighttime, and once the trapdoor is open, they should walk to the closest bed. And we could also potentially use zombies to scare the villager to quickly run away. But this is immediately out of the question because the villager panics and doesn't make any logical decisions, much less binary calculations. So having the villager decide on the closest desired destination is important, and I'll show you why in just a bit. First off, let's build our logic gates. An OR gate should be pretty simple, so what I'm going to do is have a villager input here and a villager input here, and both of them will be able to open the same fence gate in the middle, and once that fence gate opens, the villager walks through and we get an output as long as there's one input or more. Next, let's try an AND gate. This should also be fairly simple. First we'll build our inputs, then we'll have one input activate this fence gate, and we'll have the other input activate a second fence gate. And if both of these inputs are on, the villager should be able to walk through, and we get an output. Now comes the hard part, the exclusive OR gate. We'll start off here with our two inputs again, and we can put this guy behind the fence gate, which forms an OR gate, but then what we need is some way to stop this guy from producing an output if both of the inputs are on. And after giving it a bit of thought, here's what we're gonna do. We'll still have a fence gate here, but let's also place a fence gate here and here, with a job site at the end of this path. And what I've done is I've made this path to the lectern shorter than the path to the XOR output over here. So what will happen is if we only have one input, then this path will remain closed and our villager will walk to the XOR output. But if both the inputs are on, then this entire path will open up and the villager will pathfind to the closest lectern here, which will prevent a XOR output. And now what I've realized is that this actually makes our previous two logic gates completely redundant because this module can produce an X or output and it can produce an AND output here if both of the inputs are on. So not only does this function as two logic gates at the same time, but we've now just made our very first half adder. And what do we get if we combine two of these half adders? That's right, a full adder. So this setup right here is two of the same modules with one of them having our two bit inputs and the other one has a carry input combined with the XOR output of the previous module. 
Using this, we can now add three binary bits together. So let's test it. So if I just place one villager on the input here, we should get an output of one, regardless of which input it is. And there we go, there's our output of one. Let's go ahead and reset it. And if we put two villagers on the inputs, then release the trap doors, then this guy should walk to the and output, and that will release this guy, and we get a carry. So one plus one equals two, which you can see is one zero in binary. Very good. We could also test two inputs like this putting one villager here on the input and putting another villager on the carry in. And if we go ahead and release this guy, this guy should start walking to the XOR output. And then if we time it right to release this villager at the same time the other guy walks through, this should also eventually produce an output of two. So he walks to the carry out and there we go. There's our two, that's a one zero in binary. So uh, yeah, there we go. And now let's test three inputs. So we'll put two villagers up here for our two inputs, and then we'll also put a villager on the carry in. So if we go ahead and release these guys, they should eventually produce a carry out, and we can also release this guy over here, and this guy should produce a sum. So we get both a sum and a carry, which is a one one, which is three in binary. Now theoretically, we should be able to stack this full adder multiple times to add bigger binary numbers. But first, we have two major problems. One is that we need some way to automate the release of all our bits, and specifically that carry bit. It needs to happen at a specific time, preferably without player input like I was doing, and it needs to happen right when the other villager would walk by. But it also needs to happen even if that other villager doesn't come by. And that sort of reveals another problem, in that we need some sort of reliable delay circuit. If we want to combine multiple of these adders together, then each more significant adder needs to wait for the previous carry bit to arrive before it performs a calculation. But again, we can't just let them sit there until the other villager arrives, because there may not be a carry bit that arrives. So what we have to do is either delay the release or slow them down somehow. And after thinking about it a little bit, the answer is actually extremely simple. With the right amount of cobwebs, we can slow down the necessary villagers so they don't get to their output until the proper time. And what I've also done here is that I've combined two full adders together, so both of these are pretty much duplicates, and I've changed the carry line from the first adder so that it goes directly into the second adder. Something else I've done is that I've solved the activation method for releasing all the bits. Using armor stands on top of trap doors and sitting in tripwire, we can hold all our villager input bits until the moment we want to activate the adder by opening all of the trap doors and letting the armor stands fall through. So now let's test our two bit adder. I'll put a villager here and here, making a three for our blue number and have that be added to our red number, which will just be one. And of course, down here, you can see our three output locations. So what we should be expecting on these outputs is a four or a one zero zero in binary. So let's go ahead and activate it. This guy comes to the and output and releases this guy. This guy is a bit behind, so I'll break this cobweb and we should get an and output here as well. And no, no, what are you doing, buddy? No, that's the wrong location. Get over there. Okay, good. So it seems we did in fact have a bit of a timing issue. So I guess we'll just have to try that again. So one plus one one, release the bits. We get our lovely and output. This guy will carry in to the next adder. Meanwhile, the other guy comes out at the same exact time, and we should get another AND output. And this guy just simply doesn't want to go anywhere, I guess, so I'll try punching this guy off. Sorry, buddy. And there we go. Now we have a 100 output, as it should be. So now let's do another test. I'm gonna activate every input, including the carry in. So it should be a one one plus one one plus the one carry in. 
In other words, a 3 plus 3 plus 1 in decimal, which should equate to 7. Let's activate it here and watch it go. We have our first output. Awesome. Let's wait for another output. Looks like this guy is carrying in to the next adder. And we get our second output. And what is this guy doing? Maybe I need to remove the trap door. Oh, there he goes. Okay, no, you just, no, you just wanna talk? Okay, fine, goodbye. Now this guy should walk to the output. Thank you. So our final output is seven. In other words, one, one, one in binary. Great, but now what I'm realizing is that maybe we actually do need our simple OR gate from earlier because it seems that we're either having two villagers that end up talking to each other or one of them ends up targeting the final job site so the other doesn't. So let's just build this. And now let's test it again. So for our final test, I'm going to do a 1 0 plus a 1 1. And we might as well do a carry in as well. So this will be 2 plus 3 plus 1. Let's run it. We have our X or output running over here. This should generate our and output. This creates a carry. And it looks like we already got our other output. So our final output is 110, as desired. I am so glad that worked. Now, where can we go from here? Well, I did want to do an 8-bit adder or even just a 4-bit adder, but given the villager's seemingly random lack of punctuality, it's quite difficult to get things to be timed correctly. Just getting this 2-bit adder to work took several repeat attempts, but hey, at least I got it to work a few times, so I'll take it. Are these villagers reliable? Absolutely not. But could they technically do advanced calculations given enough tries? Absolutely. Would I recommend attempting it? Well, I'll leave that up to you. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.